Now, question seven. Again, I'm redoing this one. I had it on previously, I took it off because at the beginning of question seven last time, I think I made some disparaging remarks, not like me at all, about the apparent simplicity of this function. Was it again? It's f of x equals, so I'm drawing the graph of that, so y equals modulus of x plus two. Because again, this question wasn't really examining anything to do with the skills involved in graphing just a line. It's just that you would expect normally to have, or you would have liked to have had, that big graphs question where you'd get your asymptotes and how it approaches it for a big bucket full of marks. Whereas here, all the graphs appear after you spend all those weeks, whatever, you know, studying that, you get the little four mark question. But again, it wasn't actually the graphing of x plus 2 which was examined here. No, right, so on to this. A first bit, sketch the graph. Well, an important part of this question, and this will be one of the marks, would be this. The domain only goes from negative 3 to 3, and significantly, the 3s are included in the domain. So the first part, obviously, drawing the line x plus 2 is extremely simple. It's just a line going up at 45 degrees that cuts the y-axis at the 2s. Well, sorry, cuts the y-axis at 2 and cuts the x-axis at negative 2. So it's the graph that I want, so I'll just put that in dotted because that's more like the template I'm going to use to form this one. So the positive part of it remains the same. So that part's fine. But only up as far as 3. The domain stops at 3, which means here, because it's included, a value exists here. Oh, let's put it in black. A value exists at 3, 3 plus 2, 5. So that point's included. Before negative 2, the negative portion will invert upwards to turn them into the positive values. At negative 3, it would be negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, so that means it's going to go up at negative 3, 1. That's 45 degrees. So this should also be reflected to 45 degrees, so that should be a right angle, but not going very far. Again, the end point is included. That was at negative 3, 1. That would be negative 3 as well on the axis. There, that would be the graph. And that graph has got values all the way through the domain. <coughs> There's also a value at negative 2. Not sure if I was meant to have put a solid dot <coughs> at negative 2, but I've got the graph being continuous, so that'll probably do. The derivative, that's a different kettle of fish. Because there's a change here, there's an obvious discontinuity there at that angled point. So that's at negative 2, so I'll put a dotted line here. Because it's going to change suddenly at negative 2, or rather at either side of negative 2. Because it would be defined at negative 2 itself. After negative 2, you've got a line going up, up 45 degrees, that's a gradient of 1, so that would just be a horizontal line of length 1. Where does that go? Horizontal line of length 1. No, horizontal line of value 1. I'll put the 1 in. But it's not defined here, so I'll put a hollow point instead of a solid point. Neither is it defined at 3. So again, I'll put a hollow point there, I'll put the name in just in case. I've indicated the one there, but I'll put a wee y in one in brackets afterwards. It's not defined there, because to get the derivative of a function, you have to take the values either side of the point that you want and squeeze them together. It's a, the limiting value of that. And there's no after point there, so it's not defined there. Similarly, it's not defined here, because the values after negative 2 are defined by a function that's different from the function that gave you the value before negative 2. Before negative 2, I a gradient of negative 1. So I'll have to put that in. Won't go very far, it's only going to go back to negative 3. But again, they're not defined. So I'll use these hollow points rather than the solid ones. And that was back at negative 3. Maybe I'll put a wee note. Oh, I should put that negative 1 in there. I'll put a wee note that that's the line y equals negative 1. There. That's what I'd imagine would be question seven.